Thank you, um, Pastor Bethel spoke so passionately on the topic. Um, and we do have a question in the chat. Um, Pastor Be Bethel, we'll give you the first or the floor to take it and then the others can chime in. What is your definition of the organic Bahamian? My definition of the organic Bahamian is those who are born here uh, before 1973. Uh, they are full pledged Bahamians. The law um, um, clarifies that. And I believe that anyone who's born in the Bahamas, not, not just because you are, uh, you come here and and you have a, a, a child here and you're automatically a Bahamian and your parents is not, no, I don't believe in that. I, I believe that 1973, when they formed that constitution that declares who we are, the organic Bahamians by birth here in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. That's my definition on it. Okay, thank you. Um, Dr. Hamilton, Dame Joan Sawyer, you can comment if you wish before we go right to the vote of thanks. Um, I don't think I'd comment on that. That's a view that he holds and has his reasons for holding. I fully understand where he's coming from. Uh, can 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 I can I use my liberty to comment on it, um, um, Dave? Yes, please. I, I I do I do think I do think even as we listen to both presentation, that you do get a sense of what we are wrestling with now at this moment, and. I do think if we are going to have a conversation, a sober conversation in the context of moving forward, that we must, we must examine, I think, the element that you introduced earlier, uh, um, um, Honorable Dame, and that is a number of different people from different nations come into this place to, for lack of a better term, and I'm sure Pastor Glenroy will, will, will appreciate this, to be baptized unto this special thing, whatever that special thing was and is. So I, th I do think going forward, we have to almost take that same kind of, of, of framework on, given our failure to do so many things over the past 40 years given our looseness, et cetera, et cetera, to really sort of put that same framework back on the table again, particularly as we as we begin to relook at, at what nation building looks like in the context of Jubilee. And I think that's what Jubilee was meant to be. Jubilee was meant to relook at your nation, um, bring in some things that remove inequalities, that remove injustice, that remove this sense of, of, of of enslavement and I think I think Pastor Glenroy that we have some real question to ask ourselves in terms of how do we look at this thing called Bohemian now from a point of view of values and I don't think we can we can successfully advance laws without taking into account the compassionate component and part of that has to be the failure and neglect of governments over the past, you know, yes, yes, to do the kind of things that was necessary to keep this sense of nation building together. Uh, 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 and part of the responsibility that I believe is this, that when we fail from a government or a state position, then the state have to bear the burden to begin to move it forward, right? And so we have to have this conversation because a lot of people, if we, if we could just be truthful, a lot of people whom you deem or I deem to have come on the high sea are part of our school systems, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And by the strict measure of the law will not necessarily be qualified. So we have to, in my mind, 
revisit the initial foundation that I think uh, 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 Dame introduced as a conversation, as a starting point, identifying what this thing called Bahamian was meant to be in terms of values, in terms of culture, in terms of religiosity, and then make the case for who amongst us can prescribe to this set of value system going forward. And I think if we are able to successfully marshal that across, there may necessarily have to be what I call the grandfathering in of those who are amongst us. You know, the Bible talks about the circumcision component. You know, when you go into the land, everybody, everyone must go through this process of circumcision. And that may entail removing from amongst us those who do no, no longer share values. But the idea that we can advance or move forward without breeding the element of compassion and understanding given the totality of where we are, um, I think we will probably be stuck for another 40 years without moving the country forward. Mm -hmm. Too much plastic land, we roll. Uh, that was very, uh, Wonderful wrap up. I think it, and I want to appreciate and thank all of the panelists who've been involved. I think our vote of thanks will do that again, but the comments that were made were so powerful in describing uh, who is a Bahamian, how we should be involved in developing the nation going forward. Uh, for a person who have lived other places, I realized that we live in the Bahamas in a place where everyone else in the world wants to come. I mean, uh, when I lived in Washington, it was almost like the United Nations, uh, that is at the American University. Everybody wanted to come live here. Uh, everybody was just envious the fact that you live in the Bahamas. You know, I want to go there before I die, which, which means people are going to try to make their way here one way or the other. Uh, and I agree with Pastor Glenn Roy, I have no problem with foreigners. My problem is illegal migration. But when we want to go anywhere, we should do it legally. Uh, one thing I believe that is important is that our policy on um, immigration, um, the pathway to citizenship must be based on values like compassion, but also law. And we look at the values in the preamble of the Constitution. When we look at those, we define those, we will see that within those, the context of those values, we will find a way to create policies that are going to be good for us as Bahamians and those who want to come here, whether just to visit or to live or be a part uh, of being a, bah a Bahamian. And so I really appreciate this topic. I know we have not exhausted it. And if we can probably come back another time when we talk more about the immigration aspect of it and not just that aspect uh, of citizenship. And so uh, thank you so much, uh, Pastor Glenn. What did you think of all the speakers uh, tonight before we turn it back to the chair? Oh, so, yeah. Uh, everyone was right on point tonight. And we thank God uh, for them, like I mentioned. Uh, they're, they're very informative. And so you'd be looking to hear more from them. And, 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 and I am, I would say this too, I am a, I've been following uh, Madam Dame Joan Sawyer for a lot of years. Uh, I, 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 I ha you know, I have that woman as, to the highest respect. Um, I watch her over the years in the judiciary system and how she handles things. And, and she did her part. She did her part educating. I mean, I don't know if she know how much she have done it, but she did a lot. Uh, 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 telling the public certain things and and um, uh, educating them is the best way she can. But I know she's one of them. I mean, you know, there's many others, but she is one. And so I'm happy that she was here tonight and all of the other panelists, them, um, they have done a tremendous job and they've been a blessing to my life. So thank you very much for that. Yeah, Pastor Glenn, um, what do you think in wrapping up? They said we have run out of time. Yeah, there, there, there is much. Uh, what do you there, think about Pan as we finish? There, there, there is much to consider. And this phase of the journey will require the kind of sober and deliberate thought. I think I think that, that the idea that that we should just use the sword to slay the baby 
is a very, very deliberate and calculated way in terms of how we move forward. How do we salvage this thing called the Bahamas, its ideals, its values? And I think wise leadership will sort of find a way to preserve what the founding fathers envisioned and begin to make a clear path forward in terms of progressively. And we have tremendous opportunities to do it. And we're grateful that voices like um, Honorable Dame is still amongst us so that she can help us to appreciate what the foundational thinking was, what was intended, and now we have the benefit of looking at those things to even help us inform us at this critical moment. So thank you so much for having me. And again, I join you in thanking the panelists for their presentation. Yes, it is called what we call in the Josiah Institute, ethical wisdom. And we lay that on the table. We believe all of our guests, our panelists, have brought that to the table tonight. And even for future panelists, we are going to see more of that come forward as to how we build the nation. I want to thank God for all of you who have joined us. Our, our, the Honorable Michelle Sweeting out of New York, uh, a Bahamian um, justice living in New York. We do thank God for all of you who have joined us tonight. And uh, I am so appreciative, despite the hiccups at the beginning um, and the technical issues, uh, we were able to finish the night strong. And for all of you who stayed with us, during that time. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. But, but, but we have to send up we have to send up a special prayer for, for Pastor Dr. Hamilton, eh? He 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 got a whole set of work ahead <laughs> for him to bring civility to to to, to yes. that area. Yeah. Okay, yes. I agree. He does pretty well too. I've been with him on meetings uh at like the attorney general office and he sure knows how. Um, to represent uh, this aspect of civil society. Madam Chair. Yes, thank you everyone. <clears throat> We've now reached to our vote of thanks. And wouldn't you agree with me that we had two dynamic co-hosts in the persons of S. Ali McIntosh and Pastor Glenn Rule. We were honored to have your presence here tonight. But this night could not have been a, such a success without the other people that participated. Uh, we had um, your moderator, Dr. Angela Darling, Dion Pratt, Board of Director and Acting Executive Director for the Planning and Execution, Monitoring and Hosting of this meeting. So thank you, Dion. Then we had our intriguing speakers who gave excellent presentations on citizenship, who is a Bahamian. These presentations were timely, clearly articulated, and very thought-provoking. Thought um, so we had Dame Joan Sawyer, the distinguished and most experienced jurist, Dr. Anthony Hamilton, panelist and president of Civil Society Bahamas, and closing, was Pastor Glenroy Bethel, panelist for Families for Justice, Grand Bahama. And then we had also contributions from Dr. Hastings Johnson, um, and of course, people that were local and overseas. And Arita, so we appreciate, um, yes. Madam Jim, we have two hands uh, wanting to be recognized. One is our, one of our trustee, trustees at um, Josiah, Apostle Clement Russell. I'm not sure who's the other hand, but if you can at some point um, acknowledge them so they can say what they have to say. We do want- Not a problem. Speak. Yeah. Okay, so we were just gonna, I was just gonna close off um, and then give him an opportunity to make a comment. So we want to show our appreciation for the technical team and the organizers. And then of course you, the audience, because this event would not have been possible without your support. And just before the benediction, we will recognize the hand of Apostle Clement Russell. Apostle Clement Russell. A pleasant good night to all. Are you hearing me? 
Yes, yes we sir. are also. We are now. I'm thankful to be in your presence to listen intently to all the wise information that has been presented. One input I'd like to make, and it's this. God, the creator of heaven and earth, is the solution for every trouble of mankind. So every problem that we are facing, he is the solution. If he is honored and regarded as who he is, who is above all, in us all, through us all, and we need to be unto his honor and his glory, it is then that we would choose his will above us. Because what, what's happening here? We have a mixture of people to make decisions concerning solution. One of the things that has been mentioned to us is how persons have not renounced their citizenship, which they ought to in order to become a citizen of the Bahamas. So you have these people who are in all stratas of society, who will be themselves. In other words, if they are of a evil intent, they are not gonna put forth policies that represents justice and truth that honors God. So except we are set in our resolve to have God in his place, who is the solution, there will never be no solution to what we desire. So accept, we understand that, that he has solution for this trouble. He is the solution for this trouble. And this trouble will be resolved only by those who stand in agreement with him. I love you all. Truth is the only thing that makes and set us free. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, Apostle Clement, for your remarks. Um, we'll now turn the mic over to Pastor Glenn Rowe for the benediction. Thank you so much for your attendance tonight, your participation, and this would not have been possible without your support. Thank you to all of our guests, local and abroad. Father, we thank you for this time of deliberation. Thank you, Father, that you have entrusted to us through conversation, through dialogue, through understanding, through wisdom, the ideas and the ideals that you have established nations by. And so, Father, we pray that even as was mentioned earlier, that as we go forward, that your word be the blueprint by which nations are shaped, your word be the blueprint by which legislation are built. Your word should be the blueprint by which we live with and towards each other. Bless future deliberations. Thank you for everyone present. And Lord, we thank you for our country. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone.